Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, we're now in that fall season, actually, the end of the fall season, soon to be coming into winter. So I thought, hey, let's think spring. I love spring, and I went back through my archive of images and found this dogwood image here. Now, I like this image. I like the bokeh background, but I thought let's make it a little bit softer in the background. This is going to be a fun edit. We start out in Lightroom, then I'll send it into Photoshop. We'll uh, run uh, Topaz Sharpen AI as a plugin on it, get rid of the noise in the image, and also take care of a camera shake issue. Uh, the image is a bit shaky, and we'll fix that. And then I'm going to send it into Topaz Mask AI and blur that background out a little bit more. And then it will end up looking like this. I love that creamy, smooth bokeh background on this beautiful dogwood spring image. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so here I am in Lightroom. I'm going to go ahead and run auto on this image just to see what kind of a result we get. Yeah, and that looks pretty good. Uh, under detail, I'm going to keep my sharpening off and no noise reduction. I always turn on my lens corrections, remove chromatic aberrations, enable uh, profile corrections. And let's go back to basic. Let me see. I might want to pull my highlights. Yeah, pull my highlights back a little bit, bring out some detail in the dogwood. Yeah, maybe something right around there. That looks pretty good. I might do a little blurring, extra blurring of the background with either uh, Topaz Studio 2 or uh, Topaz Mask AI. I'm not going to mess with the texture clarity. Now, I shot this at ISO 800, uh, F5.6, 1 200th of a second. So I think it might be slightly soft. Let's zoom in here. I'm zoomed into 200%. Yeah, it might be slightly soft here. So I think being the fact that I'm at uh, ISO 800, I think I can get away with just using Topaz Sharpen AI for both sharpening and noise reduction. I'm going to right mouse click on my image, edit in Photoshop 2021. And I'm just going to uh, edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. And now we're in Photoshop. I went ahead and uh, duplicated the background layer and named it Sharpen AI just to save a little bit of time. And now we're going to go ahead and launch uh, Topaz Sharpen AI and we'll get started with the noise reduction and sharpening. And here we are in Sharpen AI. Now I am in the comparison view. Now if you come up to view, you can change that to the split view, side by side view, comparison view. Let's do the comparison view. And if uh, all your... Uh, Models aren't uh, updating like sharpen, stabilize, and focus. Make sure you have this auto update uh, preview checked on. That's important, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, on settings, click auto. And uh, it'll do all my auto adjustments for me here. Okay, so now we can look at them. So here's our original on the left. To the right of that's our sharpen model. Underneath that's our stabilized model, and to the right of that's our focus model. And I think the stabilized model has won here. And by the way, if you come up to view and you go to um, split view, and if you click on the AI mode right here, see where it says auto, if you click this on, it's going to determine what it thinks is the best model for you to use, or mode, I should say. And it chose the stabilized mode. And if you'll recall, when I was in the comparison mode, I felt the stabilized mode looked the best. So whichever way you want to work, either use the auto settings or work with the comparison mode and choose yourself, that is totally up to you. Either way is going to work fine. Let's go ahead and click stabilize. And what I think I'm going to do is give it a little bit of extra sharpness. So let me go ahead and jack the sharpness up a little bit to the right. And it'll go ahead and update itself here. Yeah, and that little bit of extra sharpness there, I think, looks pretty good. It'll go ahead and update all the different previews here because I moved the um, image on the screen. But I'm happy with the uh, stabilized adjustment, so I'm just going to go ahead and click Apply, and that'll send us right back to Photoshop. And now that we're back in Photoshop, let's zoom into our image here. And as you can see, we have no noise, so it's done a really good job of getting rid of the noise. The image looks super sharp. Let me show you the before. Here's the before, and here's the after. But look at that sharpness. I mean, Sharpen AI is amazing. And again, when you have an image that has a ISO, in my opinion, of 800 or lower, Sharpen AI is all you need for noise reduction and sharpening. 
The next thing I want to do is blur out the background a little bit, make that bokeh background a little bit softer. Now, I could use Topaz Studio 2 for that or Mask AI. I think I'm going to use Mask AI for this. I'm going to show you guys a few little tricks to make your Mask AI experience go quicker and you can be less fussy with it, okay? So, what we're going to do is come up to Filter. I'm not even going to duplicate my background layer. I'm just coming up to Filter and we're going to launch Topaz Mask AI. And the reason I'm, the reason I'm not duplicating the background background layers because I have my mask AI set up to do that for me and to get yours to do that just come up here to mask AI go to your preferences and uh, let me see where is it here it is right here Photoshop auto create layer that'll duplicate your background layer for you and also I checked this one on to save to a new layer mask you'll see how that works here shortly so I highly recommend that you check that one too all right so let me go ahead and close this this blue circle here is a brush. This is a compute brush. Blue stands for compute. Green, you'll notice the whole image is green. That stands for keep. And red, you'll see that here shortly, stands for cut. Now, I have videos explaining Topaz Mask AI. I give you all kinds of examples. So if you check my YouTube channel out, just uh, search for Mask AI videos, and you'll find a bunch on there, and they'll really help you out a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to go fast here. I'm going to make my compute brush a little bit smaller. I'm going to go around this dogwood here because this dogwood is what I want in focus. All right, and right around like this, I'm going to go really quick here. And just like so, and I might get a little bit of this branch right here. That's the compute brush. I want to keep this area here. Everything else I want to cut. So let's go to the bucket tools and get a red bucket and give it one click. And now all I have to do is pick a mask mode. You've got AI, translucent, or contrast. I'm going to use AI. That's generally what I use for artificial intelligence. It seems to work the best unless you're working with like a wedding veil or something translucent. Then you would use this mode or contrast for a very simple mask. Think like a city sky sky skyline or something like that with uh, definitive shapes in it okay so let me go ahead and click compute mask and in a few seconds here it'll compute our mask and here's our mask i'm in the uh, side by side view right here uh view two panes that's what i like i'm going to zoom in just a little bit and uh let's go to background let's choose blur Okay, there's my blurry background. Now, that's too much blur. That doesn't look uh, realistic to me. So, I'm going to cut that strength back a little bit. Something like that. Now, here's the original. And I like it. It has some nice bokeh, but I want more softness back there. So, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to soften it up a little bit more. And I'm thinking maybe somewhere... Yeah, right around in there looks pretty good. Now, I'm not going to get too fuss, fussy with this mask here. I'm just going to look around my image and see how good of a job it's done. Looks like it's done a really nice job everywhere. Now, right now, the image on the left is showing us the original, but it's in the tri-map view, so I'm going to shut the tri-map off so we can compare the left image to the image on the right, see if I need to fix anything. Like this piece of... Uh, out of focus dogwood here. I don't want that in focus, so I'm going to leave that out. Everything looks pretty good right here. Uh, yeah, it looks nice. I'm going to work with this stem, but I'm going to work with that in Photoshop. I'll show you how easy that is. And really, it's this simple. It's done. I think I'm happy with it. All I need to do is click Apply. Now, when I click Apply, I have two choices, either Transparent or Composite. Uh, if you choose transparent, it's going to send it back in with a layer mask. The blur will not be applied to the image, but I want the blur applied. So I'm going to click composite and it'll send us right back into Photoshop with that blurry background. Now, let me show you how I'm going to fix this image up because I don't like the way the stem looks right here, but I'll show you a really quick fix for this. First, though, let's click this eye right here. Well, let's see that here's the before. And here's the after. So we have a really nice blur on this image here. So let's get a paintbrush. And your shortcut for brush is B. And what I'm going to use is a real low flow. You'll notice my flow is at 5%. My opacity is at 100%. I'm going to make sure I'm going to have this layer mask selected. Now, one of the preferences I set up in uh, Mask AI was to send this back with a layer mask. So if you check that off, you'll get a layer mask. And this layer mask is important. It's going to help you out. So click on your layer mask and make sure you're painting with black paint, okay? And again, we have that 5% flow. And what I'm, what I'm going to do is have a decent size brush here. And I'm just going to 
paint over this a few times here with the black paint. Right now I'm painting with white paint. I'm going to make sure I'm painting with black paint. I was wondering why nothing was happening there. So I'm just going to paint over this area right like this. Even on that leaf a little bit. You see that? And just like that, I've added that, uh, you know, with that low flow, I've added that area back in there. Now, if I zoom into this area right here in this leaf here, if I want to get real nitpicky, I could come here and I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and I'll just paint on this area right here and, and expose that leaf back in there on the edge there, okay? Now, if I don't want this area to be sharp here, I'll just change my paint to white and I'll just paint that softness back in with that low flow. It's just that simple. You know, why make things hard on yourself? Make things easy on yourself. And I think that looks really realistic. And I might just let a little more of this image show through here. Again, I'm painting with, make sure I'm painting with black paint. Let's just paint a little bit of this detail in here, just like that. We'll just bring a little bit of that back in here. I'm going to paint some of this off right here. And we just have to make it look believable, but I love that. So we started out with this image, and we end up with this image. But that extra soft background, to me, makes this image really dance and sing for me. Let me show you a cool way of seeing your actual painting on this layer mask here. If you hold your Option or Alt key down on your keyboard and click on this layer mask, you can actually see the area that you painted. See, I painted here, painted here, but it's very soft. I use the very soft brush with that very low flow of 5%. So I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key down and click on that again. And now we can see our image again. Now, am I done with this image? Probably not. I'd probably do some more work in this image. But I think at this point, I would save this image out as a TIFF file with, with layers. This way, I could come back and work on it again. So I would just come up here to File and choose Save As. And then I could save it as a TIFF with layers. Uh, with all the layers intact, I can come back and just finish it up later. But for this point, I'm happy with what we've done so far. So I started out in Lightroom. Came into Photoshop, added some Sharpen AI for noise reduction and sharpening. Cleared up a stabilize issue, issue on my uh, image because I had a little bit of a camera shake. And Sharpen AI fixed that. And also denoised it because I only had ISO of 800. So it was more than adequate to get rid of the noise. Okay, and sent it into Mask AI and blurred the background out. And I started out with this image here. And I end up with this. And it's really looking good in my opinion. Hey, please leave comments and questions in the comment section below because I'd really like to hear from you. But I wanted to show you today, inside of Mask AI, you don't have to spend tons of time in there. You can do a lot of uh, fix-ups and things right in Photoshop and really save yourself a lot of time, a lot of energy. And it just makes the, uh, the joy of editing so much more joyous. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. That way, every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.